I'm here in Climax, New York, at the studio of Claudia McNulty. Follow me. I spend a lot of time in here. Uh, it's very self-indulgent, I think. I do a lot of murals here, like great big things that, you know, just take over this entire space. That's where most comfortable is, at a big scale. My parents live together uh, in New Jersey, in a little, nothing little town. I, I was trying to think of what it would be equated to here. There's nothing I can think of. I spent most of my time alone, which was fine with me, and I did artwork all the time. As a little child, I just loved paint and clay, and I had a great book that I wore out that was just full of different ideas of things to do. And, we, and I also loved animals, and this was, we had lots of box turtles. If you remember the big things, they don't, you can't even find them anymore. I played with turtles and, you know, all kinds of animals. My mother found a baby squirrel that was like this big and pink, and she brought it home and it lived in our living room. And, and it would, like, finally grew up and it would carry, like, leap across the furniture and get a Kleenex and then leap back and then make a nest in our encyclopedias. And somehow my father put up with this. <laughs> and the squirrel lived with us until it bit my brother. But it was so art and animals, that's what I did. I do do people too, but um, it's, it's more fun for me to do animals and you have more leeway with it really. There's so much involved with the people. There's John Lennon. Did you recognize yeah, him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I went to art school, uh, several of them, and found that they were, at the time, they were pretty useless, but I met great people and had a wonderful experience. I moved directly to New York. I think my first job in New York was being an au pair. I, I worked at Time Magazine. A good friend of mine moved to New York. We decided we'd make t-shirts, and we started a business that just didn't end. You know a lot of different things. Oh yeah, ridiculous. You name it, I probably be, did some of it somewhere. Our business broke up. I continued with my own business, and she did too, separately. And I was, again, very successful, but I didn't want, this is not what I wanted to do. I went back to house painting and to really getting into my work. The body of work that, that really interested me, it's mostly about things that disturb me going on in the world. It's sort of always been that way, because I, I, I've been going through all my old stuff, and I found, you know, I, I, don't, I never thought of myself as being uh, sort of an activist or whatever, but it's always things that always really bothered me. And in high school, I was uh, out demonstrating against the Vietnam War and, uh, you know, the lettuce workers, and it was something you sort of did on the weekends, and it's also a good way to meet boys. But it was really about the politics, and that's just stayed with me ever since. Corporate takeover of everything, our food supply, you know, our, our health. I get, it's just my obsession with uh, GMOs and what was being done to the food supply and my own health. I had about 15 amalgam fillings, which are the fillings with mercury in them. So I started a search on that, and that got me into the whole chemistry of things and just reading about more of it and, and just feeling so frustrated because that, and, and then fluoride was something I investigated. I found anything that I decided to research was I was getting a totally different story. My only outlet really was to make pieces about it. That was a, a, you know, a way to talk about it because there really wasn't much dialogue and, and, uh, that's, and I find that's still very much true today. Corn Corn is about GMOs, GMO corn in particular. I've always hated clowns, and so I like to use them for, for, for a foil like that, and circuses. This one on the end, that has deer and bats in it, and a target, and that's really about sort of, you know, Lyme disease. 
I don't know what the bats really have to do with Lyme disease, but they fit in pretty well right now with, with the corona thing. <laughs> oh, and being targeted, you know, it's like, that's how I feel. I mean, I, my life was, was, has been, is changed by Lyme. I have chronic Lyme and it's, you know, I, to me, it's more um, scary than, than COVID is. It's easier, I think, for people to relate to the, you know, the suffering of animals than, than to people, actually. I mean, you put a picture of a, you know, a sad puppy and you get you know, 50,000 likes, right? It wasn't intentional that way, but it's just I'm drawn to it and, and they're fun to draw. My process is basically I, I you know, sit in my chair and I look and then I walk and I do a little bit and then I sit in my chair and I think if you, you know, the percentage of time I'm sitting in my chair and I'm either loathing what I do or think, wow, that's not so bad, you know, you're doing that. Would you consider yourself an environmental artist? Well, I am in that I really care about the environment, but I'm not... There's some other people who do things so much more seriously that are environmental artists. You know, it's, it's just a vehicle for me. I wish that I could inspire people or just engage people in some way to look at things more for themselves. I think people just accept the way things are and think that they can't do anything about it or they believe, more like that, they believe what they're told. And the more I look into almost anything, I find that's not the truth. You know, it's a whole different story.